All right, and it looks like we're live. Welcome everyone who's joining. Uh, we will, as is our custom, allow our guests to a few seconds or a minute or so to join in, and we will be underway in no time. Uh, we are very happy to see everyone, although many of you we cannot see. You are at attendees, and the best we can see is uh, each other. My panelists and myself will introduce ourselves in a second, but those of you who are dialing in, please get settled and we'll um, be underway in a second. And it's it's um, an interesting use of technology. My LinkedIn uh, sent me a reminder to uh, join the this this webinar about 30 seconds after we went we went live. So we still have to work on synchronizing between those two these two platforms. Um, and I imagine many of our guests did uh, did get that invitation uh, as well. And why don't we get started? Uh, because we have only planned about 40 minutes for this uh, for this event. So we appreciate everyone who um, has dialed in. Um, very pleased to welcome everyone at our session today, which is dedicated to the cloud journey specifically for financial institutions. And we will be emphasizing the word security quite a bit during this session because, uh, of course, it is a major concern it's for so many organizations who are either starting or considering or well underway on their cloud uh, cloud journey. My name is Alexi Miller. I'm a co-founder, managing director at DataArt, and I'm very pleased to be moderating this session, which will be presented by my colleague and a partner in DataArt, Yuri Zaryadov, who is vice president and one of our foremost experts on cloud native engineering, cloud migration, and Brian Stockburger, senior cloud solution architect with focus on security, with uh, Microsoft. So we'll hear both from the main vendor, main platform owner, as it were, uh, from Brian at Microsoft, and we'll hear from the partner of Microsoft Web Storm partnership between the two organizations, uh, where Yuri will uh, share our sort of developer perspective on what we see as the right journey. Why don't we start with some introductions? Brian, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks, Alexi. Um, hello, my name is Brian Stockburger, and as Alexi mentioned, I'm a senior cloud security architect at Microsoft. I've been working in security for about the past, you know, 20 plus years. Over the last five years, I've been here at Microsoft, helping our partners and, and customers digitally transform their businesses in a safe and, and more secure manner as they take advantage of the shift to the cloud and, and all of the security advantages that the Microsoft Cloud has to offer. So I, I look forward to sharing some of this uh, with you today. Thanks, Alexi. Fantastic, thank you. Before I pass it on to Yuri, uh, one logistical item I failed to, to mention. So everyone is um, welcome to submit their questions uh, on LinkedIn. Those will be uh, retransmitted to us and we'll have a few minutes at the end of the presentation for for questions we want them make them difficult make them controversial there's nothing uh better than a little disagreement between the panelists and whenever i moderate one of these the more they can disagree the more um they can go at each other uh, the better i don't know if it'll happen today probably not but let's see if we can um, we can live in it up a little bit with that yuri why don't you introduce yourself and then you can start with the presentation Thank you. Hi, my name is Yuri Zaradov, um, VP of Enterprise Solutions and Senior Solution Architect at Didart. Um, for past uh, 10 years, I was mostly working uh, with the finance and asset management. Uh, so my major experience is uh, concentrated around financial clients. And um, today we are going to cover the cloud journey um, and migration to the cloud. And um, I don't think anyone not, uh, not noticed uh, the cloud becoming even more popular than ever. Um, even if you were isolated sitting at home for the last couple of years. Um, so the cloud uh, acceleration um, really showed a, a huge boost for the last couple of years. And uh, we see that uh, the, thing, the same trend keeps going um, and companies recognize um, the value of the cloud. So um, the main, um, what, what are the main um, solution? What are, what are the main aspects we're trying to solve for the cloud, right? Um, usually there, there's several um, and 
These are lack of scalability. If you are in your local data center, there is a maintenance efficiency and lack of automation and automation possibilities. Um, there is also limited access to uh, services, solutions, and integration. And of course, there's very complicated and sometimes uh, costly uh, solutions for highly available systems and uh, disaster recovery. So cloud is the best tool to answer all of these um, in, in various ways. Um, and um, today we're going to be covering um, mostly the, the path and the strategy, uh, how to uh, onboard these services and how to uh, better address the problems in a reliable way. Um, so the main um, uh, tool, uh, if we speak of Azure Cloud and Microsoft, um, as we do today, is a cloud adoption framework. Uh, cloud adoption framework um, became the answer uh, for the enterprise companies and uh, for the clients who are looking for a reliable way uh, migrating to the cloud, um, even if they lacking of uh, expertise or lacking of experience for the cloud projects. Um, cloud Adoption Framework uh, itself assembles um, a set of documentation, set of tools and best practices to answer all these questions and provide reliable, proven way um, getting to, through the cloud journey with confidence. And I will get back to the Cloud Adoption Framework uh, details in a second, but first, uh, let's take a look at the cloud journey itself and see um, how the companies uh, go usually through the cloud journey and cloud maturity. Um, so um, during the a lot of experience we accumulated and, and the industry accumulated um, for the companies going through the cloud migration and adopting the cloud, there were several maturity models um, defined um, which you can find yourself belong to, um, uh, which actually tell how much your company is ready for cloud migration and where do you where you are through this journey. And it goes all the way from the legacy stage when there is no cloud adopted, nothing leveraged uh, in the company, uh, all the way to the cloud native world where all of your applications are um, serverless, they using um, all the cloud services efficiently, your application stack is the most elastic and your resources are scalable to, to limitless um, possibilities. Um, and in the middle, there are several steps uh, where you can find yourself in, um, whether you just started your journey and uh, you have adopted um, virtual machines um, and resourcing from the cloud, uh, or you started uh, virtualizing your applications, containerizing it, and moving towards cloud-friendly state. Um, and being like, or being in a hybrid scenario when you don't really want all the way get to the cloud, but you want to leverage it as an extension to your infrastructure. So hybrid and multi-cloud scenarios are also very popular. Uh, but back to cloud adoption framework, um, the actual framework is really helpful for the companies to structure and standardize the way um, you approach the cloud migration. Uh, there are several setups you can use um, for, for this, but basically it is always consist of all the same stages. And the main idea of it to make your journey very predictable, very reliable, and have every step described, documented, and also have your expected results measured. So at the end of the day, um, you always get to your goals. Um, and it all starts with a strategy definition and a proper planning. And for strategy and planning, a cloud adoption framework suggests its own tools, questionnaires, documentation templates. 
then you check your company for readiness. You go um, through the readiness checklist. You use uh, specific tools for that as well, which will analyze your infrastructure, which will analyze your workloads and uh, give you enough hints on how better perform the migration, what will be the outcome, what are the best services matching for your workloads in the cloud. And then actual adoption process, uh, which continuously transfers to the governance and the management stages um, where you need to perform these actions constantly once you are in the cloud. Um, one of the um, cycles you can see here describing all these steps in, in, in the actual right order uh, is kind of a guiding you through this uh, journey. Uh, and it, as you can see, it is a continuous process. So you can make it continuous uh, either migrating parts of your infrastructure or you can do a several steps um, to perform a complete migration of your infrastructure, but make it uh, to the certain level. So in other words, it can be a first lift and shift where you take all of your workloads, put it all to the virtual environment in the cloud, but with a very familiar uh, way of managing the infrastructure for your team, and then start uh, actual migration of your workloads and make them cloud native. Or you can um, piecemeal it and take a certain workloads, part of it, and just uh, move them one by one, tackle it uh, project by project. Uh, of course, that will depend on actual circumstances for each of the firm. It's not always possible to um, take it like this because uh, usually all the infrastructure is interconnected, very well integrated, and uh, you need to be very cautious about um, these consequences. But um, Cloud Adoption Framework um, tries to help here as well, and there's a set of additional tools it suggests um, to go over this process um, with um, more predicted results and more help. Uh, so these tools include things like uh, Azure migration tools, uh, which are actual um, services, which um, analyze your infrastructure, which even perform some of the migration uh, steps for you, like database migration, for example, which can become quite complicated. So it will check your infrastructure, your environment and applications for compatibility, um, report for anything goes wrong um, and make it more reliable along the way. Um, other tools, very helpful, like total cost of ownership calculator, um, becomes a bit more complicated than just a simple resource calculator for any cloud resources, as you're probably familiar with. Um, this one allows to project your actual cost um, going beyond just resources, but um, the cloud adoption program usually involves also teams working together, making sure all the skills are on board and you have all the right people and um, you do have these teams working together according to your strategy towards these goals. Uh, so total cost of ownership calculator um, helps with that and allows to think broader than just infrastructure. Um, think of this more strategically. Um, as well as the assessment tools, uh, which are also presented here. Um, this one will analyze your workloads, will help you to guide through, the, uh, through this journey. Um, and of course, um, every cloud um, suggests nowadays so many services which are very comparable in the functionality they perform. Uh, but if you go to the details of your particular business or your particular use case, uh, you can find the right combination of these services. So moving specifically to the financial companies and the financial domain um, and how financial domain is adopting the, the cloud, we see that there are several aspects which 
our clients are really making the focus on, and these are compliance and regulatory restrictions, uh, things like data security, data governance, making sure that only the right people have access to the particular data, and um, also this need to play correctly with um, data ownership and, and, and the management, making sure that these processes are aligned. Um, high conventional elasticity is another factor which we see more and more demand for uh, because the amounts of data crunched by the companies are growing and um, companies need to process things faster and that creates business advantage that just uh, for some companies it just really helps them stay in the business. Uh, this is where uh, it is important from day one to understand how your infrastructure, how your applications scale and how inadequate way uh, it scales up and down um, depending on the demand. And security is one of these important factors in the cloud, um, making sure it's not only secured internally, but it also secured for, from the external threat. Um, cloud does provide some tools uh, for this and um, combination of it can become very powerful. And here, Brian will describe us um, how this works. Brian, word to you. All right, yeah. Thank you, Yuri, yeah, for providing some of that background around the cloud adoption framework and, and the various stages and, and steps as organizations, especially financial institutions, you know, begin, begin to migrate and, and adopt cloud services and, and embark on their own cloud journey securely. Now, securely is going to be kind of the focus of my discussion today. So what I want to cover is, is how Microsoft recommends and, and provides guidance on a security by design approach to adopt and govern and, and manage these cloud services. So as all organizations, again, especially financial institutions, look to make the move to adopt you know, cloud services, security is paramount. Now, Microsoft recommends and, and provides guidance around uh, this security by design approach. You know, building security into the foundation of cloud adoption is critical. You know, there are four key elements that are that are important to keep in mind, and we'll go through some of these. Um, you know, they include people, a process, technology, and architecture. And and Microsoft, the Microsoft Cloud, and Azure Security Services. You know, ensure that each of these four elements are incorporated into a cloud adoption strategy, uh, providing people with the training and the tools they need streamlining and automating process to be more efficient, um, the industry leading cloud technology services and the architectural guidance to build secure by design, secure by default applications and services. So Azure provides the, the most comprehensive set of security services to ensure that these you know, financial organizations cloud journey really exceeds expectations meets the regulatory compliance requirements, as well as, you know, most importantly, reduces organizational risk. The Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework with the most robust set of security services can really increase a financial institution's ability to protect against today's sophisticated threats, detect threats and, and attack attempts more quickly, and respond in a more efficient and effective manner over the traditional approaches. Um, so next slide, Yuri. So to go into these a little bit uh, more detail, some examples of these you know, key elements are you know, providing people the education and the training you know, about cloud security in general and cloud adoption um, of these, the, the three other elements, right? We are now including training resources right inside of, you know, consoles and, and portals and inside of each of these services so that your people have, you know, kind of the, the just-in-time training and, and access to, to the knowledge that they need. Um, process can, you know, assign accountability 
for these cloud security decisions, improve incident response processes and planning, um, establish a real time and, and ongoing security posture management process. You know, a few examples of, of technology is the, the ease of deploying and, and requiring, you know, things like passwordless and, and multi-factor authentication in, inside of Azure Active Directory. The integration of, of native network security controls such as Azure firewalls and DDoS protection plans and you know, web application firewalls. And these all leverage the integrated and native um, threat detection and threat intelligence and is shared across you know, different services. Um, so there's a rich and diverse you know, architectural guidance and set of recommendations you know, such as standardization on cloud identity and the use of identity-based control systems. Yep, next slide there, Yuri. So, you know, one area where Microsoft has created some guidance and, and design principles, you know, these are part of the, the top 10 Azure security best practices. And I'll summarize and elaborate on, on these best practices and, and some of these recommendations. So, as I mentioned, we've established some fundamental design or security by design principles inside of Azure. So to, to kind of go through some of these, um, yeah, back one more slide, I think, Yuri. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. So Selecting the right resource um, and including hardening and, and protection capabilities. Microsoft Defender for Cloud has the ability to harden and protect a hybrid multi-cloud environment. So it'll provide a list of recommendations to enforce security controls in cloud services, whether it is an Azure SQL database, a Azure storage account, or even an AWS EC2 instance and supports cross-cloud and, and hybrid cloud scenarios. So the automate and use of least privilege, so ensuring that users and identities have just the right amount of access for only the amount of time that they need it and only for resources that they need to access or manage. This is a core principle in the Microsoft Zero Trust architecture. Um, classification and encryption of data no matter where it's created, no matter where it is stored, and for its entire lifetime. You know, we've recently released and, and rebranded our entire compl compliance technology set, which includes, you know, data classification and encryption, and now known as, as Microsoft Purview. So ongoing and, and continuous monitor, monitoring of, of security systems and implementation of a, an incident response plan when monitoring identifies a threat and when response is deemed necessary. So Microsoft Sentinel is a cloud native SIM and, and SOAR solution, you know, enables organizations to stay in front of incident response with the goal of reducing mean time to detection, mean time to remediation, which are, are two key metrics that security operations strive for. Uh, yeah, next slide, Yuri. Thank you. Um, so identify and protect endpoints, regardless of operating system, location, uh, or device type, right? Could be, um, you know, somebody working from work from home or, you know, inside of a corporate uh, environment or, or, or traveling, whether it's on a mobile device or uh, a corporate, um, you know, managed uh you know, Windows 11 machine, you know, a good inventory and protections around endpoints are, and devices is crucial. Um, this is another core principle and, and component of the Microsoft Zero Trust architecture, protecting endpoints with Microsoft Defender and managing um, using Microsoft Endpoint Manager and conditional access using Azure Active Directory. Um, protection against code level vulnerabilities and the ability to identify and update, update these vulnerabilities quickly, efficiently. You know, Microsoft's threat and vulnerability management capabilities inside of Microsoft Defender is just one way that Microsoft can help keep your systems and, and applications current and, and vulnerability free. 
so model and, and test against you know potential threats you know in the form of say tabletop exercises incident response simulations you know the guidance and, and simulation integrations to help train and and test incident response plans right so you know there's a as i mentioned there's a a, a top 10 you know azure security best practices that's part of the the cloud adoption framework um so as part of that that overall cloud adoption framework um, and as additional guidance microsoft recommends a, a zero trust architecture you know for all organizations to build a secure end user environment and overall infrastructure in addition um, the azure security benchmark currently on, on version 3 which includes overall guidance using the cloud adoption framework, right? This provides overall guidance on, on security best practices. The Azure well-architected framework, which provides guidance on securing workloads um, on Azure. Uh, the Microsoft Security Best Practices, which are recommendations with, with some of the examples that I just mentioned. And lastly, the Microsoft Cybersecurity Reference Architecture, provides visual guidance for security components and, and the integration relationships of, of various um, services and, and technologies. So, you know, for more information, you know, please check out the, the cloud adoption framework, um, the well-architected framework and the Azure security best practices. I believe, you know, Yuri, uh, the slides that Yuri presented provided some, some links to these. So we can go to the next slide, Yuri. So yeah, over the past you know, five to six years, Microsoft has been establishing ourselves as the premier security provider in the market and not just you know, Microsoft protecting Microsoft and, and our applications and services, but really securing you know, an organization's entire technology estate from identities, endpoints, applications, infrastructure, networks and data regardless of its location whether it's on premises running in azure um, or on other cloud services as i mentioned you know we are truly a hybrid multi-cloud um, security platform that can protect these various resources you know wherever they are and you know since 2000 data arts Experts have helped companies around the globe leverage Microsoft's technologies. As a Microsoft Gold Partner and an Azure Consulting Partner, DataArt has extensive experience with the Microsoft stack. You know, they help clients develop, integrate, and optimize Microsoft-based solutions that, that drive innovation and growth. Their Azure Consulting Framework covers cloud readiness assessments core infrastructure and security audits, as well as you know, cloud migration roadmap planning um, that Yuri just kind of stepped through, designing proof of concepts and consultation on, a, on cost optimization. So they offer Azure consulting services really at any stage of the, of the cloud journey. So, all right, well, you know, thank you. I'll now hand things back over to uh, uh, Alexi. I wanted to um, stay with the theme of security for a second, Brian. So I'll throw the first question to you. There's been a lot of discussion. I know for a fact that uh, it, it's an active uh, subject of conversation among our clients. Uh, this, this notion of private clouds, hybrid cloud, uh, public cloud, whether sure or other. What's uh, Microsoft guidance in terms of security of those three options? How do you guys think about it? I, I, I guess it's too simple to ask which one is more secure. But what's your frame of thinking about it and how do you recommend clients approach this decision on which is easiest or more most productive to harden? Yeah, so I mean if you look at from a you know, if you're asking, you know, which cloud model is is most secure, whether it's you know private, public, or or hybrid, um, you know, that's really not an easy answer to, or, you know, question to, to answer, you know, really, you know, one is not necessarily more or less secure than the other, right? Each of which, you know, can be secured adequately for an organization. So the decision is really more about, you know, which cloud model is, is best for the business. 
and then making sure that the adequate security controls are in place, you know, for that, you know, decided cloud model. Um, there's obviously a number of, you know, common mistakes that we see, you know, organizations as they're, you know, migrating to the, the cloud, regardless of their cloud model. Um, and so from a, from a security perspective, you know, some of the most common mistakes that we see are, you know, trying to take on-premises security practices um, and, you know, procedures with them in the cloud, right? And, and not properly securing resources based upon, you know, some of the best practices and recommendations that, that we just, you know, walked through, right? So there's, you know, the cloud is a very different, you know, environment than, than an on-premises world. So you can't take your same security processes with you. Um, it's kind of a, which is why Microsoft has, you know, spent a lot of time and, and invested a lot of resources into providing guidance for cloud adoption and, and being able to adopt, uh, you know, some examples are, you know, common mistakes that we see are, you know, just the basics, not protecting storage accounts and um, leaving access to, to VMs open via things like SSH and, and RDP, you know, very, that are easily exploited, but um, also as easy to, to um, secure. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll allow myself to follow up this just with one, one, one more question on that. You've mentioned that the common mistake, and I want to return to that theme in a second. One of the common mistakes is not is a, applying the same security principles and approaches as one did in the, on on the on prem in the on prem world to uh, public cloud world. What is the most efficient way for a security officer, CISO, or a security enterprise security expert to get trained on cloud native? Uh, approaches. What what are Microsoft resources? Where would you point someone who is in the beginning of that journey? Yeah, so that's that's a, a, a really good question, right? So we we talked about um, you know the cloud adoption framework, and inside of the cloud adoption framework, there's a a series of you know from a C cell perspective, right? You're talking about you know kind of C level. We've got a number of resources available. We've, we've got a series of what we call CISO workshops that are available, fully available um, out on our uh, you know, documentation um, doc site. So that runs through a series of recommendations and, and best practices um, with live videos from some of our you know, leading experts in the security space providing, you know, the guidance to, to say, CISOs. Um, and then as you kind of, you know, work your way down the organization from the, into the, to, to the security practitioners, Microsoft has invested, you know, quite heavily in, um, you know, training and, and certifications for, you know, the various uh, security practitioners, whether it's architects to engineers to security operations to, to become very familiar with, these key security, uh, cloud security concepts and, and the technologies and the services that, that Microsoft has, has built out. Thank you. Yuri, let me turn it over to you and pick up on this theme of the cloud adoption framework, which you've, you, we've covered uh, in, your, in your presentation. Similar question to you, how does one get started on the CIF, uh, both in terms of basic training and also uh, is, there, is there a place to try or a way to try. Forgive me if it's a silly if it's a silly question, but before committing fully to that framework for a massive enterprise migration, how does one get their feet wet, as it were? Yeah, there, there, there are several ways um, you, you can uh, you can start it, and and there are ways to to kind of a work through some proof of concept. Um, and as a part of cloud adoption framework, it does also provide materials like uh, a blueprints, for example, um, for landing zones, which allows you pretty quickly establish your landing zone in the cloud, attach it to your infrastructure and start kind of a playing around with the cloud, right? So um, you can do this at a small scale. Um, on the other hand, 
you can start from going through the more like a questionary part, more like a strategy definition part. Uh, that would be more for for the business and management um, uh, team to, to go over and see, OK, where the cloud can lead us, right? How where we can get to and uh, how far is the journey? <laughs> so um, because that will al allow to understand assess the current state and understand how far we need to go, right? Because there, there are stages. And as I said before, you don't need to go and jump uh, through this maturity model all the way from the legacy to the cloud native. You can go and make this one step forward, um, but get a specific benefits out of it. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you, you've mentioned where do you go and how far is how how long is, is the journey? So one of the questions that I'm looking at that came came through is when is it reasonable to expect return on investment? I understand the answer. It, it, it depends, but maybe both of you can comment on what it depends on, and maybe a couple examples from your own practice of organizations of different scales and complexity on when and how they begin to reasonably expect uh, sure. return investment. Yuri, go ahead. So you need to you need to keep in mind first of all that the, the whole model of going from the on-premise data center to the cloud is a movement from capex to opex uh, model and you go into your operational expenses right so it it becomes your operational expense rather than your um investment uh in the infrastructure right so it's a different pattern first of all um and you need to keep that in mind and you can you can run this uh, in parallel on a very small scale you don't have to commit to the huge data warehouse uh, to start from um, and then for the return on investment question it is it is indeed tricky because um, cloud is not only changing the way you pay for the infrastructure if you're doing the same thing but it also enables you to do the new thing because it gives you access to all these various services which cloud provides. Like if we speak of Azure services, one of the most interesting would be taking cognitive services and machine learning pre-trained models, uh, which are out there in, in Azure waiting for you to just feed it some data and it will give you some insights. So you can um, make some gain out, out of it right away. And this will be uh, some new enablement for your business and a quick prototype for your business. Uh, mm -hmm. So these um, opportunities um, need to be kept in mind uh, when, when we talk about um, the, the ROIs. Uh, also, um, the moving movement to the cloud itself from the day one, um, it it's also touches this common mistakes part. Um, and Brian uh, briefly um, also sp spoke about it, like things like something got like um, unobserved and, and quickly set it up manually by hand uh, it, and it stays like this and it creates some vulnerabilities or maintenance inefficiencies. That is what needs to be addressed. So when, when the cloud migration happens, uh, automation should also be kept in mind and DevOps practices should be kept in mind because this creates the process repeatability and uh, way more transparent environment uh, and secured environment. Um, and speaking of that, automation uh, becomes one of uh, key focuses for all the infrastructure IT implementations. And from my experience, what I saw, uh, clients um, felt a lot of advantages moving to the cloud because they could automate way more and that reduced maintenance cost. And they started then expanding this automation to their operational processes. That's really interesting. We're almost at the time. So I'll allow myself one more question, uh, Brian, Brian, to you. And I'm, I'm intrigued by this notion of uh, return on investment and Yuri's comments. I interpret that sometimes, you know, return investment can be time to return investment can be negative because you're getting uh, access to capabilities previously unavailable just by starting your uh, cl cloud journey. But in your work with clients, how do you advise them to think about it? Because security is tricky, isn't it? The, it's easier to say, what's the cost of not doing this? What are the risks that are that are created? What are some of the 
um, gospel that you are spreading uh, with your clients? Yeah, that's a really good, um, you know, question and, and kind of discussion point. I think things have shifted over the last, say, five years, right? If you were to ask me that question, you know, say five years ago, we would have had a lot of conversations about is the cloud secure, right? Like, you know, should we move to the cloud because we don't know if it is secure. But over the course of the last, you know, five years and more recently, we're having conversations with customers now about we are moving to the cloud because it is more secure, right? We there's more security services available. There's um, you know instant access to threat intelligence and and threat detection and threat protection, right? So the cloud is now becoming you know the, the conversation has shifted um, you know quite considerably where you know organizations are adopting cloud services and and you know making that cloud shift because of security with security in mind um, but I think you know I always kind of suggest and recommend to, to customers to to you know as, as Yuri mentioned right is is you know start slowly, you know, test things out. Um, don't, you know, kind of go, as they say, you know, head first into the deep end of the pool, right? Like start it small, right? And one of the year, one of the um, slides you shared was around, you know, the maturity models and, you know, cloud friendly versus cloud ready, cloud native, right? You can get some, some initial, you know, quick return on investment as you start moving, you know, some of the easy workloads into the cloud establishing some of that quick um, security considerations and, and, and um, security controls, but, but yet benefit from, you know, the cost models and, and um, you know, things like that. And then, you know, as you become more uh, skilled on the cloud and, and um, you know, moving to, you know, cloud native um, services and, and those types of things. So I always kind of, you know, take a start slow and small, and then as you mature, move, you know, more mature, um, you know, workloads and, and um, applications and services, et cetera. So. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Brian. I, I know I said this was going to be last question. I lied, but I lied for a reason because I really want to very quickly um, ask Yuri this, which was uh, among the questions that came in as well. Yuri, in 30 seconds or so, so CAF, the cloud ad ad adoption framework, is this something that is applicable equally to a hedge fund and a global multinational bank? Is it something suitable for a large organization as well as a small one, or is there a differentiation? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This this can be uh, this can work in any scale, and uh, we saw that applied successfully for small clients as well as the big enterprises. Um, it. Uh, every client has its own nuances. And again, the, the cloud adoption framework um, path or, and, and a plan will not be the same for all the clients. It's it's set of best practices, set of tools, but it helps you form your own way. Fair enough. And on that happy note, I once again thank you, Brian. Thank you, Yuri. And thanks to everyone who listened in. We invite everyone to follow up with questions as necessary uh, here at Data are in partnership with Microsoft. We're very happy to consult with any organization interested in this journey. Uh, consultation is on us, and there's a lot of value to be derived from our combined expertise of these two organizations. Thanks again, everyone, and it's a wrap for today. Have a good evening. Thank you. Yep, thank, thank you. you.